to episode 71 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folk Tales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn how Siegfried brings a thousand men to Eastland to prove the strength of the king and win for himself a bride in part two of how Brunhild and Kremhild were won. Then came against him Alberic the dwarf, clad in full armor. He fought with a mace which had seven balls on chains. The prince was for a time in great peril, but he overcame the dwarf also and bound him. Alberic then cried, Had I not already vowed to serve another knight, thy slave would I be. Who art thou? said the prince. My name is Siegfried. Knowest thou me not? Glad am I it is thee and no other, the dwarf said. Worthy indeed art thou to be king of the Niblings. Then Siegfried unbound the dwarf and the giant, and gave order that a thousand knights be brought forth to do him service. Alberic awakened the heroes who were within, and thirty thousand hastened to obey the ruler. He chose from among them a thousand, and they all sailed forth together in many fair ships towards Eastland, where Brunhild reigned as queen, and Gunta and Hagen and Dangvart awaited their coming. When three days had passed, Brunhild and her maiden saw, looking from the castle windows, the white sails of many fair ships coming over the sea towards Eastland. The queen was stricken with alarm, fearing a sudden invasion, but Gunta told her that the vessels bore his vassal Siegfried and certain of his own warriors whom he had left behind. Brunhild went to the beach, and the first she greeted as aforetime was Siegfried. He was clad in gorgeous raiment, and noble was his bearing. Thus was Gunta rescued from peril once again by the prince of the Netherlands. The queen then realized she must need to depart from Eastland, and having chosen her mother's brother to be the chief ruler, she sailed towards Burgundy with Gunta and his knights. But she refused to be wed until she had reached the palace of Vams. A swift and easy voyage was made, and when they were nigh to home, Siegfried was sent ahead as envoy to Vams, so that Queen Uta and the princess Hrimhild might know how the king had prospered. Giselher beheld first the prince's approach, and he told his mother and fair sister that Siegfried was nigh. Their hearts were filled with dark foreboding, but soon did the prince make them to rejoice with his glad tidings. Siegfried sat by Kremhild's side. Her face was rose-red with love, and it was her heart's desire to kiss him. Gunta Entreats thee to come to the shore, the prince said, so that thou mayest welcome Brunhild hither. Kremhild went gladly with all her maidens, and Gitelher led forth a great force of warmen. Brunhild was well pleased because that Gunta was a mighty ruler, and Kremhild and she kissed one another with love. Together they all made their way towards the stately palace at Vams. A great banquet was held, and Gunta and Brunhild were wed. Thereafter, in secret, did Siegfried speak unto the king, saying, Hast thou no memory of thy vow? Thou dost swear that when Brunhild came hither, I would be given Kremhild for wife. Well, have I served thee? Gunta said, I forswear not my oath. What can I do that shall I do now? So the king called Kremhild before him and said, Thee did I promise unto Siegfried, and if thou wilt have him now, my heart's desire will be fulfilled. The princess answered, Him I shall with great joy. Then were the oaths sworn betwixt them. Proud and happy was the noble prince. Maidenly and demure was the beauteous princess. They all sat down to feast together. Brunhild was at Guntar's side. Her face was pale and cold, and when she beheld Siegfried and Kremhild together, she began to weep bitterly. The king spoke to her and asked, Why dost thou sorrow? T'were mere seemly to make merry, for thou art now queen of Burgundy. 
I weep, Brunhild said, because that thy sister hath been wedded to thy vassal. Great is my shame thereat. Gunther told his queen then that Siegfried had lands and castles that were his own. Great riches hath he, said Gunther, and therefore am I glad that Kremhild hath wedded with him. But Brunhild still sorrowed and refused to be comforted. When the feast was over, they all returned to their chambers. But Brunhild said she would not be as a wife to the king until he told her all concerning Siegfried and Kremhild. Gunther was wroth and answered not, seeking to appease her with caresses. But she laid hands upon him so that he was overpowered. Then binding the king with her waist girdle, she hung him on the wall. Next morning, Gunther told Siegfried what had happened, and the prince promised once again to come to his aid. So when night fell, he assumed the cloak of obscurity and entered Gunther's bedroom, where he wrestled with the queen. A fierce conflict it was, and Brunhild deemed that her opponent was none other than her husband. In the end, Siegfried prevailed, and he took from her the silken waist girdle which she wore, and drew from her finger unawares a ring of fine gold. Thus was Brunhild subdued. After that hour she had but the strength of other women. Siegfried gave unto Kremhild the girdle and the ring which had caused many knights to die in the list at the castle of Eastland. When the rejoicing came to an end, the guests went their way. Siegfried returned unto his own land, and Sigmund and Sieglind kissed and embraced him and his beauteous bride. Henceforth, Sigmund said, my son shall reign as king. So spake he unto his people, and they rejoiced, because that Siegfried was a mighty warrior. Ten years went past. A son was born to Kremhild. He was named Gunther. At the same time, Brunhild had a child, and he was called Siegfried. All went well until Brunhild, who thought of Kremhild with jealous heart, prevailed upon Gunther to invite Siegfried and his queen to a feast at Vams. Harry went forth with his king's message and was received with gladness by Siegfried and Kremhild, and they bade him tell unto Gunther that they would both attend the feast. When Gary returned to Vams, Brunhild asked of him, Is Kremhild still as fair as she was aforetime? The envoy answered her, Yea, and she brooded over it. Brunhild still regarded Siegfried as a vassal to King Gunther, and she was angry because that he did not make payment of yearly tribute nor visit Vams to do homage as befitted a subject ruler. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.